Welcome to today's On This Day in Tudor History with me, Claire Ridgway. Now today I'm taking you back to the reign of King Henry VIII and right towards the end of his reign. But on this day in Tudor history, the 24th of May 1546, letters were sent from the Privy Council to the future Protestant martyr Anne Askew and her estranged husband Thomas Kime. The couple were ordered to appear in front of the council within 14 days. But why? What was going on? Well, let me tell you about Anne Askew. And this information is actually based on an article I did for the Anne Boleyn Files quite a few years ago. 25-year-old Anne Askew came from Lincolnshire and was the daughter of landowner Sir William Askew and his first wife, Elizabeth Rotsley. Anne received an excellent education and Karen Lindsay, author of Divorced, Beheaded, Survived, a feminist reinterpretation of the wives of Henry VIII, writes of how Anne was influenced by the Protestant ideas that her brothers, who were students at Cambridge, would discuss when they came home to visit, but that the Askew family themselves were conservatives and Anne's father opposed the rebels during the pilgrimage of grace in 1537. It was the pilgrimage of grace that Lindsay gives as a reason for Anne turning her back on the old faith because Anne saw the rebels attack her home and seize her brothers. At around this time, Anne was forced to marry Thomas Kime. Kime had originally been betrothed to Anne's older sister, Martha, but when she died, Anne was offered as a replacement. It was not a happy union, but it did result in two children. Kime was traditional in his religious views, and Anne by this time had strong Protestant views. Lindsay believes that Anne probably survived the early days of her marriage by spending her time with her sister Jane, who was married to a Protestant, George St. Paul, or St. Paul. George was friends with Charles Brandon, Duke of Suffolk, and his wife, Catherine Willoughby, who was a supporter of religious reform. From 1538 to 1543, the law allowed normal parishioners access to the English Bible in churches, and those of Protestant leanings took the opportunity to conduct Bible readings and share their evangelical views. Anne was one of those people. But in 1543, King Henry VIII changed his mind about Bible reading and passed an act which prevented all women and men below the rank of gentlemen from reading the Bible. But this did not prevent people like Anne from sharing their views and preaching because they had memorised scripture. In fact, this law made Anne Askew even more determined to share her Bible knowledge with those who were deprived from reading the Bible themselves. Kime, a traditional conservative, could not and would not cope with his outspoken wife, a woman who even refused to take his name. So, as advised by his local priests, he kicked her out of the family home. Anne simply moved in with her brother Francis and petitioned for divorce. Her petition was denied by her local court, so Anne headed to London, where she was convinced that she would get her divorce. As Karen Lindsay writes, like the king's new wife, Catherine Parr, Anne revered Henry for freeing his people from the evil of popery. She was certain the king, who had himself disposed of several unworthy spouses, would allow a godly woman to be free of her unbelieving husband. While in London, Anne met up with an old friend and neighbour, John Lascelles, a man of Protestant persuasion, and it was he who introduced her to people like Hugh Latimer, Bishop of Worcester, Nicholas Shaxton, Bishop of Salisbury, and Dr Edward Croom. These men were not only high-profile Protestants, they were also connected to Henry's new queen, Catherine Parr. Anne flourished with the support of such friends and the climate of reform in London. Unfortunately, although some of London was open to reform and fell in love with this passionate woman, Anne was making enemies. Bishop Stephen Gardner, a Catholic conservative, was looking to discredit the new Queen Catherine and deal with the Protestant climate that seemed to surround her. 
Anne Askew was not only an outspoken heretic stirring up the people of London, she was also linked to the Duchess of Suffolk, who was a good friend of the Queen. Perhaps Anne could be used to bring down the Queen. In June 1545, Anne Askew and a few other Protestant sympathisers were rounded up and arrested for heresy, but later released due to lack of evidence and witnesses. A few months later, in early 1546, Anne's petition for divorce was dismissed and the court ordered her to return to Kyme, something which Anne refused to do. Bishop Gardner was keen to use this refusal against her though. Although she'd been arrested again in March 1546 and subsequently released, Gardner summoned her to London to order her to return to her husband and he used this as an opportunity to question Anne on her religious beliefs. Anne shared her religious views, including her denial that Christ was present in the sacrament, saying that the bread was just bread and that if it was left for three months, then it would go mouldy. She stated that she believed that the sacramental bread was left us to be received with thanksgiving in remembrance of Christ's death, the only remedy of our soul's recovery. This was heresy, and she was tried for it at Guildhall on the 18th of June, 1546, found guilty and condemned to death. After being condemned to death, Anna Askew was taken to the Tower of London, where she was subjected to torture on the rack at the hands of Gardner's right-hand men, Sir Richard Rich and Sir Thomas Risley. Even though she'd already been condemned to death, she was racked because Gardner was determined to link Anne to the Queen's friends, women like the Duchess of Suffolk, the Countess of Sussex and the Countess of Hertford. And Anne was refusing to name names during her interrogations. As Anne had already been condemned and she was a gentlewoman, the Lieutenant of the Tower, Sir Anthony Kingston, refused to continue racking Anne after the first turn. He left the tower in search of King Henry VIII to inform him of this illegal and appalling torture and to seek a pardon for letting it happen. But this did not stop Rich and Risley. They simply racked the poor woman themselves until they were stopped by Kingston, who informed them that the king had ordered that Anne should be taken off the rack and returned to her prison cell. Anne had been so badly racked that on the 16th of July, 1546, the day of her execution, she had to be carried to the stake on a chair and the stake on which she was burnt had to have a seat attached to it to support her body. Awful. But what happened to Thomas Kime, her husband? Well, he did turn up in front of the Privy Council with Anne within the stipulated 14 day period. Anne denied that he was her husband, and while she was detained and thrown into the Tower of London to await her trial, he was allowed to go home. I'll give you links to my talks on Anne Askew's trial and her execution. Also on this day in Tudor history, the 24th of May 1562, according to contemporary sources, a monstrous child was born in Chichester, Sussex. This deformed baby was not the only monstrous birth that year, and these events were seen as signs from God. And you can find out more in last year's video, which I'll give you a link to as well. Thank you for joining me today. You can subscribe to this channel by clicking that subscribe button there. You can hit the bell to be notified as these videos go live, and you can leave a comment and give me a like. I'll be back tomorrow. See you then. Bye bye.